Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I could really see we have a global participation. I'm glad to welcome all of you. So all of us, uh, mostly in this domain of campus recruitment, whether we are working on the university side uh, or whether you are working on the corporate side for campus hiring, all of us or most of us, we have a secret desire that uh, can we really get a magic uh, broomstick, Harry Potter magic uh, broomstick? And why? So that we can really have 100% placement, campus placement. We can hire thousands of uh, graduate trainee engineer or management trainee from hundreds of institutions uh, in say within a month period. Uh, we can really improve our selection rate. We can improve our joining rate. Uh, we can cut down our cost, right? And all this magical stuff uh, we can really achieve without actually exerting ourselves much, right? And most of us in this domain, we know that every day we are burdened with uh, Excel, burdened with Word document, uh, Google Sheet, and multiple tools. So uh, my name is Bhupesh Dharia, and I welcome all of you uh, those who have this secret desire and you are in right place for this masterclass on digitizing campus recruitment uh, process. And this digitization and automation perhaps uh, will replace this uh, Harry Potter magic broomstick because neither there is a Harry Potter nor there is a, a magic broomstick. So let me start uh, with this note, my structured presentation. Wait a moment, let me load my presentation. Okay, so all of you can see my presentation. Wonderful. So my talk is divided uh, essentially into three parts. Uh, one, number one, I will be giving you theoretical uh, framework background about what is digitization? What is the automation? Uh, why digitization uh, in higher education, in recruitment? Uh, that is one part. Uh, the second piece I will be talking about, uh, what are the challenges within campus recruitment, within university structure or corporate? Uh, what are the tools you require within your toolkit for achieving a greater degree of automation and digitization, right? And the third part, which I will insert in between, I will be sharing my experience of helping companies like TCS, uh, companies like Capgemini, Hexaware, in hiring uh, thousands and thousands of management uh, graduate trainee engineer, uh, automating some part, uh, which was almost 15 years back, online uh, campus recruitment testing, we were the first one to roll out. And uh, my journey of how we are developing this digital and automation platform to help you folks. Uh, and then uh, Anita will be giving you a structured presentation on Muni Siegel, which is a digitization and automation campus recruitment platform. Uh, followed by Purvesh will be giving you demonstration about Muni Siegel uh, for recruiters and for university. That's a brief agenda, which uh, Anita has also shared with you. Uh, feel free to stop me in between and ask questions if you have in your mind or if you like to really add any point. So let's have some uh, perspective about education industry. Right. Uh, most of us, uh, we are not aware how big education industry is, specifically in this part of the world. Uh, we have pretty narrow view about those, those who run uh, the private education. Uh, but let's understand education industry from the point of view from money. So education industry is roughly four times than the telecom industry. Education industry as on today stands at a revenue of $6 trillion, which is likely to grow uh, reached $10 trillion uh, within next eight years. 
by 2030. Let's also understand what this six trillion dollar means to us. Uh, India's GDP is roughly around 2.8 trillion dollar. So education revenue across the world is twice the size of Indian GDP. And India is, by the way, among top five uh, global economies. So that's the kind of scale education industry operates. Software industry is roughly around uh, four and a half a trillion dollar, roughly. It is much bigger than the software industry as well. So let's come down. So uh, education industry is the only industry which is not heavily uh, impacted or deployed digital technologies. Uh, at least this part of the world, which is Asia Pac, which is Africa, which is uh, Eastern Europe, uh, or to a large extent, even the Western Europe, major deployment of digital technologies has been in North America. And uh, most of the companies started from Canada. So North America, top universities have fairly adopted digital technologies and done digitization. But education industry has not done much. Um, even Corona could not really force us to really do massive digitization. Of course, we have seen uh, some greater degree of digitization in form of adoption of online classes, uh, particularly on Zoom or some, uh, some level of ERP. But it's still end-to-end -end digitization within education industry is untouched. So let's try to really dwell upon what is uh, digital transformation. And then slowly and gradually we'll discuss uh, what are the various framework and why digital transformation is needed in education. So digital transformation is all about becoming a digital enterprise. Uh, any organization which is becoming a digital enterprise uh, will continuously evolve various aspects related to its business model. And I would further go uh, beyond this definition which Deloitte has given that it does not only stick to say business model, it also impacts your vision, your business model and your operating model, uh, which is heart uh, of any organization's life, which actually helps to really uh, add wings to your dreams. Uh, I will be talking about uh, in subsequent slides, right? So this actually covers what it offers, how it interacts with the customer and how it operates, right? And very simple terminology, a digital transformation will give you a shield uh, so that you can really foolproof your business. Now, digital transformation, of course, it impacts uh, your uh, business model. It helps your vision. Uh, vision. Uh, but the core, whatever you have decided, let's say you have decided to become world-class, say, cybersecurity company, right? And uh, your business model says that, yes, this is your target segment. These are the customers you're going to really serve, uh, right? And this is the kind of value proposition you'll offer. But to actually see it in reality, you need very strong operating model. And the operating model is the heart for successful execution of your either vision or business strategy. You need people, you need processes and the technology. And this whole digital transformation actually it sticks all these three pieces together, right? So let's say people, people need to be trained on various digital technologies, right? People need to be rewarded. People need to be motivated. People need to be evaluated. They need to be given skills, right? Uh, people need to be given some uh, process, right? People need to be given workflow so that their efficiency can be improved. And that's where this technology piece comes into the picture. Digital technology actually has to build up a solid uh, bedrock on which people can really play with the technology and make this operating model uh, perfect. Right? Now, what are the, uh, let's discuss what are the enablers of this uh, digital transformation in last say uh, 20 years. In last say 10 years, this digital transformation in various industries uh, took exponential curve and specifically during this COVID period two years. So most of the companies say digitization, what they have seen in last two years, three years, they have not seen in last 20 years. And that's what also my experience in education industry. I've been working in developing education technologies for last 20 years. 
and uh, ironically i have seen uh, that major adoption of digital technologies happened during the covid period only <clears throat> what are the enablers so number one enabler is mobile right so uh, today you have roughly around 7.2 billion people on this planet and out of which uh, close to 3.5 billion is having the smartphone uh, with internet connectivity right and that's uh, that's the power uh, everybody is carrying in india you have uh, roughly around 1.4 billion population and uh, almost uh, and similar number of mobile phone uh, people are having it does not mean that everybody is carrying the mobile phone uh, but <clears throat> the penetration is is a pretty large today among students uh, mobile penetration is as high as 99% right uh, so this mobile phone is basically enabler where mobile phone has become your laptop your computer device right and everybody is carrying the mobile phone today uh, and cloud these cloud technologies in last uh, one decade uh, has uh, given a generator to everybody at their home so they don't have to really create a uh, say keep a generator and this cloud computing has powered various businesses and digitization at a scale uh, <clears throat> companies tons of startup companies have seen the ray of light because of this cloud and of course social uh, social media has enabled this massive digitization uh, robotics automation rpa is another pillar and enabler for this digitization uh, blockchain and artificial intelligence when i am talking about ai i am also including uh, advanced analytics uh, data science uh, big data Uh, and uh, data availability uh, better algorithms so uh, these key six factors has enabled massive amount of digitization this also tells us that any digitization journey which you will be walking through uh, essentially these six technologies are going to really play a huge role and that is where uh, most of the organization they have mobile first Uh, google has become ai first so google is no more a search company it is now a more of a ai company now automation what is automation it's very simple this is ibm definition automation is a term of technology application where human input is minimized right uh, it's a fairly simple and there are typically four kind of automation will not go deeper into each uh, just we'll we'll touch briefly basic automation process automation integration of automation and ai driven automation ai driven automation does not require any human intervention where in the ai itself uh, decides which process need to be automated and and <clears throat> and does that now key features of automation uh, so there are multiple features but i have put down only two major features uh, of any successful automation uh any work automation does the workflow automation so what do you mean by workflow automation uh, i have also put down uh, listed down the workflow of campus recruitment on recruiter side and institution side university side in my subsequent slides but uh smaller pieces of the process becomes the workflow let's say you want to create a team so what you will do so there are couple of steps right and if you stitch these pieces together and then you really write a code and put it into the brain of a robot and and then then robot follow those steps automatically without you doing it manually right uh, that the kind of stuff is workflow automation right so let's say uh, you want to um mm, invite application let's say you have created a criteria so your workflow of hiring a fresher is that uh, for a cool campus that you will send a uh, notification to various colleges colleges will further circulate it to students the student will further fill up the application form and then application form they fill up the application form uh, you will get the data in google form google sheet then you will shortlist and then after shortlisting you will send them the email uh, confirmation me email and then after that you'll send them the link of the test uh, and then after that once the test is conducted you'll further shortlist and those who will clear the test you'll conduct the interview 
and you will take the grade of the interviewers and then you will release the offer letter based on the cutoff, right? So there are these multiple steps and within each piece, you have certain processes. So you, when you have to really create the workflow, can you really create a workflow and then further automate it or partly automate so that the manual work can be removed, reduced, right? You can't completely remove the manual work, uh, but you can really reduce it to a subsequent level. Let's say, Interviewing process, you can't really automate, right? The human intervention is uh, needed to really judge a candidate. Of course, there are two thoughts will not get into that debate, but uh, work, any automation will take care of this workflow, not uh, only smaller pieces of the process. Uh, second part is, which is of course related with the workflow, which is mapping the process. So whatever the process is there, which you do it uh, in a manual way, can it really map the same process in the digital world, right? So that's a process mapping, and then you create the workflow and workflow could be dynamic. Let's say, what is digital transformation in higher education? So, uh, universities don't have a choice. And uh, during COVID, universities have realized uh, when they didn't have the money to even pay the salaries. Uh, that they have no choice other than going digital. They have no choice other than building up, a, uh, adopting online examination. And I have seen when the corona hit, uh, most of the universities and colleges across the country got into panic mode because there was no system. And uh, we are glad that we contributed in this piece. We offered our online examination system, which is the AI proctored examination system, to various institutions, Goa University, Mumbai University, NITI, I am Shillong, right? So uh, this question is, uh, of course, is a useless question, uh, when to adopt and why to adopt for digital transformation, right? Uh, that question is completely passed. Uh, you have no choice. Uh, either you adopt or you go extinct. And I can really have an offline discussion on that. So digital transformation has got two major fundamental pieces uh, other than the technology and system, which is mindset. And uh, I have seen a lot of universities, and this is not typically with the university, this is also with the enterprises. So there are tons of digital technologies are already out there and some of them are free of cost. But people still stick to the manual work, still they are not adopting to digital transformation. Uh, because of the mindset, chal raha hai, kaam to chal raha hai. why I have to do, status quo is there, uh, why to really take a next step and do that, right? So this mindset is a major uh, bottleneck. And of course, uh, we can't really blame human being. Uh, there is also one, another component, which is uh, digital literacy. So we feel that just adopting a mobile phone or using a laptop, or building up a software uh, has done a digitization. No, that's not so, right? So we have also created a framework in last, I will talk about that framework that how do you really measure, where do you stand in your digital journey? So digital transformation is essentially is a process of upgrading your legacy system, right? Uh, and moving into digital ones to actually help uh, and, to meet the evolving demands of your students, your faculty members, your recruiters, your regulatory bodies. You have tons of regulatory bodies. You have AICT, you have UGC, you have NAC, right? Hundreds of compliances. Several faculty members are burdened with creating these reports. Other than faculty members, they have become administrators and clerks, right? A lot of assessment whole year, right? Uh, tons of the manual work. So uh, most of us, we are dying with the burden of uh, Excel, Word, uh, documentation, Google Sheet, right? So uh, digitization, of course, these are all past pieces of uh, these all technologies are built upon the digital, but are they really connected? Are they really helping you to improve the efficiency at the first level? Yes, but the second level, if we have to really, it's just like, you were walking, uh, you were earlier on bicycle and then you got into uh, Maruti 800, right? 
uh, but or on nano, which has got a, its own limitation in terms of speed. If you go on uh, this uh, Mumbai Pune Expressway, you can't really drive with uh, Maruti 800 on 150 kilometers, right? Uh, for that, you need uh, a world class vehicle like maybe BMW or Lexus or some other vehicle, right? So it's about upgrading yourself so that you can really achieve higher speed, uh, higher efficiency. Uh, but of course, you don't have to really spend uh, the exorbitant money from switching from, say, Maruti 800 to uh, BMW, right? And there, I will talk about those pieces uh, that how you can really achieve digitization uh, without spending at the cost of a BMW, right? <clears throat> Now, what digitization actually does, digitization impacts almost all these aspects. It impacts your culture and leadership, and it is, essentially it starts from there. It particulates from top to bottom, right? Uh, <clears throat> it also impacts your ambition and aspiration, right? So once you build up the di digitization, uh, perhaps your ambition was to really become the best institution, best management institution in Pune, right? It will upgrade your aspiration, then you will start thinking about becoming the best in perhaps in India and becoming the best in Asia Pac and worldwide, right? It enhances the value which you are giving to your customers, your stakeholders, which could be student, which could be corporate, right? Uh, on the other hand, let's say the ample, uh, a large a large IT company is recruiting, right? So what kind of experience you are giving to your student? Uh, are they really going on multiple silo systems? Uh, right? Or are you giving them this smoother uh, experience, right? So what kind of experience and engagement you're giving and which further leads to the brand, right? Because brand is, uh, I call it brand is a composition and simply if you have to define brand is composition of two part, your ability to deliver what you have spoken or what you're saying. And the second thing is how is the user's experience uh, dealing with you on multiple touch points, uh, you as a human being and, and multiple digital touch points uh, within your organization. Of course, customer platform and data, all these need to be integrated. The data cannot be really on uh, multiple places. It also impacts the organization workflow and, and lastly, the operation. So it impacts the whole organization right from vision to business strategy to your operating model. Uh, finally, what it gives you, it improves your efficiency, effectiveness, your outcome. It enhances your brand. Uh, uh, it enhances, it reduces down your workload. It reduces down the cost. It improves the outreach specifically in, in the campus recruitment. So that is the additional point which I've added. Uh, <clears throat> largely, all these uh, three points uh, is, is, is applicable to any industry, be it telecom, be it uh, pharmacy, be it uh, automobile, uh, but specifically to uh, recruitment, campus recruitment, uh, it also helps you to improve your outreach. Uh, universities can reach more number of recruiters and recruiters can reach to more number of universities and campuses. So here is my, I finished my first part, which is digitization, automation, very briefly, all right? And the second part I am starting about the challenges in campus recruitment. What are the various tools you require in your toolkit to do the automation? And briefly, we'll touch upon uh, the workflows. Right. So before I start, uh, let me share one of my experience when this whole digitization journey started. Uh, roughly in around 2006, Right, uh, one of my friend, I will not name either my friend as organization, uh, called me up uh, from some part of India. He said, uh, Bupesh, I am in uh, <clears throat> big trouble. Uh, I said, what? So this guy was heading a campus recruitment of one of the IT company. That uh, the, the right has happened in this college where I have conducted the campus. And then he narrated his uh, horrible story. He said there were almost 5,000 candidates appeared for the campus recruitment and roughly for uh, close to 200 openings. 
and uh, what has happened uh, at the when the final result declared there were hardly 10 candidate or 20 candidate were selected uh, so out of the 5000 candidate there were close to uh, 300 400 candidate were from the host college and remaining candidate came from various part of the state right and when the final result came out hardly 10 percent candidate were selected who were not part of this college right so the host college uh, 90 percent of students were selected from the host college and 10 percent from the outside and that created a uh, huge anger among those those who came outside and there were around roughly around 5000 and and they created ruckus uh, they had to really call police they had to scrap the entire campus recruitment process and, <clears throat> and these guys complained went to even top management so long story short he said this has happened i had to cancel the campus now i am coming back to mumbai and can you really help me because you knew that i am developing education technologies right and that time this was not known this fancy word as a attack and uh, then uh, i was working that time on building up online uh, 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 examination system online uh, assessment system then we gave this online assessment system to this company my friend and uh, believe me that was the first starting point of online campus assessment in india and uh, we did massive recruitment uh, we took this company to various part of the country and uh, complete transparency transparent uh, recruitment process uh, no complaint right and likewise we help uh, other companies <coughs> in india uh, be it Capgemini, be it Hexaware, be it CSC, uh, be it TCS, right? be it CSC, right? All these companies, we have done thousands and thousands of recruitment through this transparent online assessment system, right? Otherwise, earlier, what you used to do for Capgemini, we had to really visit roughly around 72 colleges, uh, get the Excel sheet, uh, shortlist the candidate, uh, send the team over there, do the manual assessment. Now we we could really do uh, that time through the online. Now today this online becomes uh, like a birthright. But uh, uh, think about way back in 2006 when even didn't have the internet, a very absolutely poor internet. So we had to really create local LAN uh, to avoid any kind of internet uh, disruption and, and do it. Uh, so it was even conduction of online examination that time was pretty painful because you have to really set up the LAN and do it <clears throat> anyway. So with this background, let me share a couple of structured challenges. Number one, uh, for uh, universities, uh, the number one challenge is, of course, outreach. So those who are at remote locations, they don't know where to reach, whom to reach, uh, who is the campus recruiter guy, or what is the email ID, who is the right person, right? If somebody has to reach in Capgemini, it's like an ocean, there are hundreds of recruiters, whom to reach? right and why they should really visit you second low level of digitization right so there is uh, in terms of literacy and in terms of really digital tools uh, the third part is like a poor efficiency effectiveness during a lot of manual work because if 100 companies send you the request you have to really shortlist and then send this excel sheet to every recruiter which anyway is is not a wise thing to really do that uh, because there are a lot of fake recruiters which they collect your data and sell it in the market. Right? But uh, other issue is like you keep on doing it manually again and again. The fourth piece is uh, fragmented processes due to silo system because uh, some part you're doing in say, let's say you're sending the, you're inviting companies to the Google form, right? <clears throat> then you are importing the data, then you're sending requests through the email, you're giving the confirmation uh, your candidates are uh, feeding the data in google form then you're downloading an excel sheet then you're shortlisting then you're sending it to the recruiter right <clears throat> so all these are uh, silo processes because of these silo systems it's not that they have designed it that way because there's no such system which can really integrate all those pieces integration is not a difficult proposition but uh, very few companies have done that Next piece is campus branding. Uh, and a college which started 10 years back, they have a huge difficulty in terms of building up the brand. 
uh, companies don't recognize them. Uh, why we should really come to you? Uh, do you have NAC accreditation? Uh, are you in top 100, right? <clears throat> but not necessarily, but you'll get the best candidate even in top 50 or top 100 candidates. Um, and during COVID, we have seen, I was surprised to see even top companies have hired candidates from even remote places, right? Uh, because uh, this digitization has also broken the barriers of uh, uh, barriers led by, say, socioeconomic conditions, locations, and other aspects. Uh, the next challenge which uh, universities face, how do we really improve employability? How do we really prepare candidates for the campus, uh, which is campus interview, uh, CV preparation? Uh, how do we really train them uh, for various uh, coding tests, various aptitude tests, right? <clears throat> and very simple thing, CV, right? So if I have done the interview for thousands of candidates and uh, you see when the candidate bring the CV, all CVs are different, right? And there's so many mistakes. So a lot of time, uh, training placement officers invest, and that's the reason the department name is training and placement. In terms of the CV building, and still it is uh, quite inefficient and very ineffective. Uh, the another challenge is, which is uh, predominantly in this part of the world, India, uh, that uh, the out of 100 candidates, there are roughly around 75 candidates or 70 candidates are only eligible candidates by top companies because all top companies, they have typical criteria through 60%, 60% in 10th, 60% in 12th, and 60% in their graduation. So there are a lot of candidates, they are they become non-eligible candidate, right? Uh, which is roughly around 20%, 10% to 30%, sometimes 40%. But on an average, 15 to 20% are non-eligible candidates. Uh, they are not useless. And they took the admission, and, and this is a university's responsibility if they uh, they felt that these candidates will not really get the job, why you have in the first place gave them the admission, right? So we can't really uh, shy away with our responsibility. We also need to really offer them the placement. And there are a lot of startup companies out there which do not care about throughout 60%. My own company, MUNI, we don't care about their communication skill, uh, which is primarily their ability to speak good quality of English. Uh, why we should really burden with uh, uh, this burden of speaking good English, that's not my mother tongue, right? So we hire candidate, even those who are good in Hindi or Marathi or other languages. Uh, they, they need not to be good at English, right? Because they don't have to really face the client. So uh, non-eligible candidate is a big issue. The last piece is certainty poor insight and uncertainty in the final outcome, right? So these are sub, but uh, major challenges is reaching to the recruiter, uh, building up a brand, right? Making students employable. These are uh, out of these eight, if I have to really pick up, these are the three top challenges universities are facing. Let's come down to the challenges uh, to the recruiter, which is similar. Uh, number one is outreach. Let's say there are 52,000 colleges are there in India. All right, there are roughly around 10,000 professional colleges are there, which is engineering, management, pharmacy, and other colleges. Uh, how do we really reach them, right? And creating even a unified data is extremely difficult. None of the regulator in India is having the training and placement office data, unified data. Uh, every 15 days, every month, you need to really keep on updating, mm -hmm. right? And uh, where to reach? Let's say if I have to really hire a candidate in Kolkata, I don't know which colleges are there, who to reach, how to reach, right? So I need to really put somebody will go on their website, fill up the form, get the email. So outreach is a major issue. Getting the right fit is another issue. Uh, poor efficiency, again, similar uh, because of a lot of silo system, uh, fragmented processes, building a brand. Like if some new startup company comes, uh, the college will say who you are, right? Uh, we can't give you zero day. We can't give you day one, right? So uh, typically in traditional campuses, TCS, Wipro, Cognizant, Microsoft, Google, these are the names which are being heard. But every day, thousands and thousands of companies are being registered. India has become the country of a startup. And they don't have the brand. So how do you really build the brand so that they can really attract the good talent? Right. Uh, cost and time for building up available resources. You have to really hire the candidate, then put them through the training process. And sometimes you have to really train them, them the, on the same courses which they have studied, right? Like, for example, They've studied SQL in their engineering. Again, you would really bring them back and train them on SQL, which we have seen with various uh, corporate clients. 
increasing cost of hiring because if you have to really go on various digital tools also the cost is hiring growing uh, there is a direct cost and there is an indirect cost right uh, direct cost could be your traveling cost right uh, your testing and assessment cost but indirect cost is uh, typically uh, the manager those who are going to interview right and that increases if your selection rate goes down horribly right because uh, you also have to really pay to those managers those who are interviewed right so even if they are giving one hour there is a cost attached to that uh so if your kpi kpi goes haywire right your cost also goes haywire right poor insight uncertainty because uh, at various stages you need to really have some visibility that how many candidates has applied or what is the application filling rate uh, <clears throat> how many candidate has appeared for the assessment how many candidate has uh, completed the assessment how many have cleared how many has reached to the interview what is my interview to final selection rate what is my offer to joining rate right so all those uh, pieces you want to have the visibility in real time or a near real time right uh, uh, during covid i have seen uh, for hiring 1000 people have even extended 10000 offer letters right because they were not sure that even out of 10 candidate one candidate will finally join now so this is the typically workflow of a recruiter when a recruiter goes for the hiring so what a recruiter does they will identify the colleges they will create the jd right so they will do the in internal assessment for what job they want to really hire uh, uh, what skills they require how much salary they want to hire uh, offer what is the number they want to really hire they will get the budget allocation and then then they will send the request to various colleges hundreds of colleges and then this is a whole manual process then you have to really coordinate with each training and placement officer in college right you have a large team which will keep on coordinating uh, haggling for the zero day day one secure the slot all right <clears throat> some uh, colleges like iit bombay iit delhi they have their erp system you will go and register then the second piece is once uh the college accept the college will share the data then you will shortlist or the college will send you the shortlisted candidate list you will do the further shortlisting then you will communicate to the college and the student about when you are coming for the uh, pre placement talk at all if you are conducting the pre placement talk then you have to communicate about assessment and selection so uh, you will do the uh, assessment test or perhaps gd or interview hackathons or code base or case study base then you will conduct the interviews compile the grades right and then you will also maintain the reporting mechanism so you'll either use power bi or excel sheet to really measure your kpi then various metrics and then finally onboarding and after scaling <laughs> uh, large organization they have their own ats uh, but the problem is ats is lying somewhere as a uh, candidate are filling up application in uh, google form right so it's a lot of uh fragmented pieces uh, are there right so typically this is workflow uh more or less and uh, when you really design a system you have to really design this workflow in a way that it should be dynamic you can really piece, uh, pick up the various pieces and then stitch it together uh, similarly the workflow for the universities uh, <clears throat> uh you need to really manage the data you need to really get the data of all the candidate there semester marks and 12 marks their email phone numbers right uh, their projects their skills uh, you need to really manage the data of the recruiter updated data of the recruiter then you send the request uh, for the outreach then you will based on the jd of the companies you will shortlist the candidate right and then the assessment process you will facilitate the assessment process to the, the companies and then finally uh, this is essentially the fifth step is basically for parallelly or even before that you will start preparing these candidate in terms of their cv preparation interview preparation uh, mock interviews mock tests right and all those kind of stuff now so <clears throat> we discuss about the what are the challenges we discuss about the workflow right now how do we really make this workflow automatically how this workflow works for you without you manually intervening this right so today depending on recruiter to recruiter and training placement officer to officer college to college you know companies to company they typically in by and large uses multiple tools right 
uh, which could be online application form, which could be Excel sheet, which could be Google sheet, uh, which could be uh, for dashboarding, they typically use Power BI or Excel sheet or Tableau, right? Uh, they will be for communication, they are primarily relying on uh, email. Some companies are using SMS and WhatsApp as well. Uh, for interviewing, you will they will be using typically Zoom or Google Meet or Google Team, uh, Microsoft Team and Google Meet. Uh, then some companies are using Calendry for scheduling or uh, Google Calendar, right? Uh, some companies are using uh, a <clears throat> AI scheduler in in various components, right? Uh, then you have uh, the traditional online uh, assessment tool and then you also have the ai proctored assessment tool and most of the companies have started offering these tools so you stitch uh, various tools right uh, together to really do the automation so but most of these tools uh, lies in silo right they are stand alone and you need to really buy on subscription model to the various tools right uh, let's say you need to have a crm wherein you can really manage the student data and company data uh, likewise, companies are having the uh, applicant tracking system, which is called ATS, for uh, having the end-to-end -end visibility about various stages, right? Uh, you need to really have the bulk emailer system to send out the bulk emailers. You need to have the follow-up. There are a lot of tons of software which can really automate the follow-up, so you don't have to really manually do it. Uh, there are hundreds of uh, uh, such tools are there, right? So. Some of you, you those who have might have got a uh, LinkedIn reminder from LinkedIn message reminder from me uh, that uh, has done by one of our automation tool. Uh, so that is done by uh, my bot on my behalf, right? So you don't have to really do and send messages to manually to hundreds of people, right? Uh, auto data updation because uh, recruiters data they keep on pitching the jobs, right? So you have to have the uh, updated emails and their designation. Then online application, you will create the sophisticated online application or you will uh, stick to Google form and then you will use various uh, JPR or other tools to really <clears throat> get the data on some uh, emailer system which will trigger uh, auto emailer. Auto shortlisting profile, right? Uh, CV parsing, which is NLP based. Uh, Google Drive for taking care of the documentation. Uh, auto CV generator, uh, interview scheduler. So there are tons of tools which you need to really stitch together to make it work. <clears throat> and, and there are a lot of uh, companies that are doing it pretty successfully. Uh, but uh, I really, I have my own sympathy and I really appreciate them that those who are able to really stitch together all these pieces and are still making it work. <clears throat> But you can still try if you don't have a budget, if you don't have uh, a, a unified ERP system, you can pick and choose multiple tools and keep on adding the different layer. And they're pretty effective. Now, <clears throat> what are the challenges in building up a campus uh, recruitment platform, whether it is for uh, colleges or whether it is for the companies? Um, and because of these challenges, so let me uh, spell out a couple of challenges. Number one, you need to have a domain knowledge. And domain not only on one side, the other side as well. So domain on the side of uh, talent acquisition team, campus recruitment team, early career hire team, and the other side on the university side. So you need to have very complex domain knowledge. Uh, whatever platform you will build, you need to really keep on continuously updating it, right? Uh, and there are a lot of technology uh, upgradation is happening, right? So you will keep on releasing the features. Uh, it is not one-time investment. You have to keep on continuously investing. Uh, say last 20 years, I have been keep on investing uh, money in our technology platforms. Uh, there's no stopping, right? And not one application fits all, right? So you can't really have one application and you presume that this will be suitable to almost every company. Dynamic workflow, you can't really have a static workflow. Uh, massive investment in terms of full-time developers. So when people think about developing a software, they think it is only about software developers. No, it is not. Uh, you need to have the developers, you need to have business analysts, you need to have the AI engineers because we will uh, bring in some smartness. Let's say uh, AI proctored assessment. Uh, so 
thousands of candidates are appearing for the examination, how you're going to really assess and stop impersonation. So you need uh, AI infusion into that, computer vision into that, which can really distinguish whether it is Bhubesh Dehariya or whether it is Purvesh Matre, right? And can select and, and such capabilities need is brought in by the AI, right? So let's say our uh, AI proctored assessment system, uh, <clears throat> During one of the examination in Panji, uh, there's a uh, so our system was showing at 10 o'clock. Uh, this was a girl, and 10:15 this girl became a boy, and her location from changed from Panji to Delhi, and our system gave a flag, and we could really block this girl, right? Uh, so imagine that thousands of candidates are appearing. How you're going to really determine this, right? So you need uh, some human level intelligence into your uh, software. And that human level intelligence, when you infuse into system that becomes the artificial intelligence. And for that, you need artificial intelligence engineer, AI engineers or machine learning engineers who will be able to do that job. Then data engineers, data scientists, uh, domain uh, experts you will require, and this team will really build it together. And then you have to really keep on doing pilots. Uh, various tools and system need to work in systems uh, sync because there are hundreds of knobs which you need to really work in sync so that your system can really deliver the perfect output. Right. So we discuss uh, one part: digitization, automation. We discuss about the challenges in uh, campus recruitment. You know, faced by universities, faced by corporate, right? And what are the components of uh, uh, digitization and automation? <clears throat> Uh, so, how do you really become the change of agent for digital transformation? Uh, and this is for both, uh, whether it is for the campus recruiter or whether it is for uh, uh, training and placement officer. So, we coined the terminology which is Agile Digital TPO. And uh, our definition Agile Digital TPO is basically transformation champion for career development and uh, service or uh, placement service to make it future proof, right? And which will facilitate the career discovery uh, smoother for the candidates. That's a di agile digital TPO. On the flip side of that, that is agile campus recruiter is a digital transformation champion of campus recruitment. And he will uh, facilitate uh, the, again, the di career discovery uh, and the career discovery journey uh, is smoother for uh, career aspirants, right? And provide the fresh blood to the organization in a very agile fashion. And, uh, agility is is more is like a, a cheetah, right? And in Hindi, uh, <clears throat> we we say it fortila, right? So this entire digital transformation, automation, digital tools will give agility to whether it is TPO or whether it is a campus recruiter, right? Now, how do you really assess? So we discuss a lot, and how do you really assess where you are today? in terms of our digital maturity journey, right? And we release this uh, framework, right? And uh, which you can really use to do the self-assessment uh, to measure where do you really stand. And it, it, it uh, measures your maturity on one to five scale, right? And so that you can really plan your strategy about further uh, digitization, building your own platform or adopting to existing platforms in the market, right? Uh, what are the various pillars of digital maturity rating? Uh, it is typically strategy, customer, people, operations, and technology, right? So how do these uh, four or five pillars actually uh, is facilitated by your digital technology? Are they really fragmented? Are they in sync? Uh, how they are enabling uh, implementation of your strategy through the operating model, right? Uh, how is your customer experience, uh, right? How you're empowering your own people. So this uh, maturity framework uh, is around these uh, five pillars, <laughs> right? And uh, here I end my uh, talk. And uh, thank you so much for your patience uh, hearing. And uh, I hope that you will be able to really take some pieces uh, back in your organization and will help you in your digitization journey.
Uh, I can take one or two questions if you have any. You have a, if you have any question, you can either use the chat, bo uh, chat box or you can use your microphone. Uh, okay, so Neha has a question. What is the drop ratio of the young talent? Okay, hi, hi, good evening, uh, sir. Sorry, I'm not. Uh, uh, earlier, I was not able to unmute myself. Now I'm able to Please. unmute. So, um, a very good evening to uh, you and everyone. So, sir, uh, as uh, I'm a part of an environmental organization, belong to an engineering organization. So, right. we do not require the higher placements, uh, you know, the, the direct fourth year placements, but we do have a, you know, a plan for called uh, graduate engineer trainees, right? So, I've been into the campus recruitment has been almost six plus years now, right. but the drop, the drop ratio of the young talent generation from the last three years is on an increasing rate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they are, uh, you know, going for their higher studies, they are moving to abroad, and it is a major challenge currently we are having. So I just wanted to, you know, know your uh, expertise about this as, uh, you know, the, the most of the, because uh, the, the interns or maybe the GTs are even not taking, you know, are not considering their branches. If they are from the electrical, they are okay to move to the business consulting as well. Mm -hmm. So this is in current, you know, challenge, I guess most of the organizations are facing. So just want your help or maybe the expertise in that. Wonderful question, Neha. Uh, giving answers is much easier, but asking questions is one of the most difficult propositions. But I think I'm not the expert in this area, but that's the state. And that state has been there for last ages, last couple of years, right? So you have been handling for last six years. I am seeing this problem since I was uh, myself studying engineering, right? In the last 30 years, nothing has changed. The good part is number of graduates which are coming out has increased drastically which can really offset those who are dropping out. So uh, today's generation, they're liberated, right? Because their parents have the surplus income and they don't have uh, any burden on their head to really go and grab the job just after graduation. So they can really pursue their dreams, which is a good part. Uh, and uh, so I think that the status, so uh, there is no solution for that. Uh, and I don't well, see it as a challenge. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, sure. So, 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 so you, you know, sir, the company is investing the amount, the time, the mentors are, expo you know, uh, investing their time, their knowledge. Right. So, yes, and being in part of and maybe the campus recruiter and maybe an HR. So, this is a drastic challenge we guys, I guess, most of the companies are facing. So, yes, uh, the, the, you know, the complete, the retentions are in process, uh, the monetary, you know, the non monetary terms as there. But uh, definitely, I think. Uh, maybe in, in some of the ages or the other now you have provi you're providing the digital solution so maybe that can also helps with the providing them some technology yeah, so that's a, that's the issue so earlier i used to think that this is the only indian trait right that indians will take the offer and then they will not really respond right and this year during covid a candidate even have five offers or ten offers which i have not seen in the last 20 years uh, so the great resignation impact we have seen in india as well but i think and the recession dark clouds are on our head, right? So once this new year happens, we'll see this attrition, people grabbing 10 offers, not joining. Uh, slowly and gradually, the market will really do its own correction. But that's more of a behavioral change. And I see that institutions, corporations, so all together have to really come together to really change this mindset that we commit, uh, we need to really stick to the commitment not we should really become the job grabber of a grabber in the market but that the uh, reality at this point of time uh, thank you noha thank you so much so uh, this recording will be available to you uh, right so you need not to worry about that so anita over to you so anita uh, ram is uh, director for muni campus and anita will be walking you through the structure presentation on uh, Muni Seagull, which is uh, campus recruitment and automation platform. So Anita will uh, solve some of the challenges which I have put in uh, my talk. Uh, 
over to you Arita. And thank, thank you, you, thank sir. you everybody. I'm here. If you have any questions, feel free to type here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for highlighting the importance and the real need of digitization and automation. So as we have heard from sir, now let us focus on the challenges and actual requirement you know, of the technology, the advantages of technology to resolve the existing issues and to, to the maximum of it. You know. So let's, let's see a uh, detailed presentation of MUNI campus. Allow me to share my screen. So is my screen visible to everybody? And I'm audible, right? Okay, so I am Anita and I'm the director at MUNI campus. So let me take you through the solution MUNI campus, what we offer, what we are. So as we all know, one of the top obstacle for growth is not getting the right talent. So uh, we start from here and we'll slowly and gradually come to the uh, solution. So uh, we are here MUNI campus to facilitating the seamless discovery of right career cho choices and the need of early career talent. So as we all are aware that talent uh, and jobs are not the issue, but the real challenge, the real issue is to connect the right job seeker with the right job giver, you know, the right fit needs to match. So that is the actual challenge. Uh, before getting into the detailed uh, presentation, let me just uh, walk you through our uh, legacy, what we are. So we started India's first campus recruitment online testing that was in 2006 and we did a lot of successful campus recruitment that time for organizations like TCS for Capgemini, for Exaver, for CSC and around 15,000 fresh engineers were hired at that time using uh, the platform what we had built. So we were known as GFIR Solution and now we are known as Immuni Campus. So a couple of challenges I know it's all, already been highlighted by Mr. Thayeria. Let me just take you all once again through it. So a couple of challenges what the Institute are facing. We have based on our understanding being into this field for so many years, our ground level experience, we have highlighted and identified the most common challenges faced by every Institute. So first one is outreach, you know, to reach out to the maximum number of corporates to invite them. So outreach is one of the uh, challenges. Then um, we come to employability, how to increase that, how to get 100% placement. Then the poor efficiency and effectiveness due to a lot of manual work which is in involved at present currently in most of the institute and university, uh, which requires a lot of manual work for the to manage the entire campus placement. So that is again one of the challenge. Then the fragmented process due to the silo system to manage the entire uh, process of campus uh, placement, you know, in a in a fragmented fashion. Then campus branding, again, one of the challenges Then the campus preparation where students need to be prepared to face the campus, to face the interview. Then campus for non-eligible student, again, one of the most uh, important uh, challenge, what most of the institutes and the institute, uh, institute from the tier two cities, cities are facing, basically. And then the poor insight of this entire activity, what's happening. So, uh, as I was talking about silo system, let me just highlight this point. So, currently, currently we have multiple systems available which support us into the campus hiring process, like application tracking system. We have online application, testing platforms. You know, many job portals are available, and most of the institutes are using all these to really manage their campus hiring process. But then, all these processes, what we understand, are in are there available but into a fragmented fashion so you don't get any accurate uh, result out of it and using all these fragmented system leads to higher cost it leads to uh, a non-centralized report you know leading to inefficiency poor result and there's no uniform experience out of it so again even after uh, you know using uh, digitization there is no uh, accurate result 
now couple of challenges what we have also identified from the recruiter side you know again one of uh, the challenges recruiter uh, uh, challenge for recruiter is outreach reaching out to n number of institute you know uh, according to the requirement according to the preferences of job location so again uh, reaching out to the right kind of uh, institute then right, getting the right fit of the candidate based on the requirement is again one of the challenges then again the poor efficiency and effectiveness due to a lot of manual work which is involved from the hr side to manage the entire activity of the campus placements then fragmented process which again uh, is done by the recruiters when it comes to conducting the assessment conducting the interviews taking gds when it comes to campus placement uh, the number of uh, candidates appearing for the same is uh, on a higher side to manage the entire activity using this silo system again leads to a lot of challenges then again the campus brand uh, one of the challenges then the cost and the time what this uh, what the recruiters or the organization spend on developing available resources one of the challenge increase this this leads to the increasing cost of hiring so overall cost of hiring also increases and then no centralized uh, reporting system or poor insight after this entire activity so uh, here we come we have seen the challenges and here we are in uni campus and we are here to give you a solution called as transforming uh, which which will help you to transform the campus recruitment with the help of the ai powered uh, solution offered by us called as uni seagull so uni seagull is an ai powered centralized internship and campus recruitment suite that helps you to transform your campus recruitment process be it in be it an institute university or an uh, recruiter so how we really do this we do this with our ground level experience uh, as i said we have a presence uh, since la last 20 25 years in the same field with the all india reach what we have as number of recruiters and institutes are onboarded with us and they're working with us so we have our all india presence and with uh, our technology platform which is muni <coughs> so as, as i've addressed the challenges let me come up with the solution what we offer so one of the challenges what we have seen uh, was outreach so uh, we provide a solution that is campus campus outreach tool <coughs> and the sample campus outreach tool helps you to really reach to maximum number of recruiter through our platform so at a given point you can connect with you know uh, thousands of recruiters who are associated with us you can reach them reach them come uh, connect with them communicate with them you know in a single click you can send them invite to come to your campus and to the campus hiring process so that's an outreach tool what we really provide you with then lms solution it helps uh, to overcome the challenges of employability where the students can really upgrade themselves update themselves by learning uh, and upgrade uh, you know studying and learning themselves to be updated then the challenge of poor efficiency and effectiveness due to lot of manual work what we have seen from both the side when it comes to institute and the recruiter so here we give you our platform which is muni seagull which helps you to overcome this challenge and it gives you a centralized dashboard with the complete uh, uh, report of you know what is happening in this entire campus hiring or campus placement activity then the fragmented process due to uh, silo system uses of silo system what the is one of the challenges so how to overcome that so here we provide with you an integrated workflow management so our platform muni seagull gives you an start to end uh, visibility right from reaching out to a company communicating with them uh, you know connecting with them inviting them for the campus placement uh, shortlisting the applications and then uh, managing the entire interview process from having the assessment test or having the jds until the student gets an offer letter so the entire integrated workflow management system is provided to you all then um, the next challenge campus branding so it gives you a better experience of reaching out to number of institutes and 
uh, reaching out to number of corporates. Then we come to the next challenge of campus preparation. Which so here we help the candidates with campus preparation material. Lot of uh, you know early prep materials are available over the LMS solution. What we provide, lot of mock test preparation materials are available for the students, and they can also prepare themselves for interview so that they are ready for the interview while they face the interview. Then uh, campus for non-eligible candidates. So you're connecting with maximum recruiters, increase the campus brand visibility so that, you know, even the dare to uh, cities, colleges and the students from different geographical locations also get the equal opportunity to participate for campus placement. And last but the last solution of, you know, poor insight. So we provide you with end-to-end -end digital solution that is our campus, uh, that is our application tracking system, which is, as I said, will give you a clear insight, a clear reporting mechanism on a single view to understand about the entire hiring process, both for recruiters as well as for the institute. So that you come to know that uh, from where you have started and where each student of yours is landing. And when it comes to recruiter, they understand that how many uh, candidates from this which particular institute are being interviewed and what is their status. So these are the solution <coughs> provided by us. Um, now let me highlight, you know, uh, the pillars what we provide from MUNI Campus Seagull. So we have an end-to-end -end campus workflow and data management, as I said earlier. We provide you with a campus application tracking system, which is a detailed uh, application tracking system right from uh, uh, you receiving the application until the students receiving an offer. You can track the entire uh, journey of the candidate. Then a private job board and an auto profile creator for the candidates and for the institute. Then AI powered profile recommender system that suggests the best possible um, you know, uh, candidates available based on the uh, JDs, what the recruiter have given. Then AI-powered uh, proctored assessment and auto-scheduler uh, for interviews and JDs. So all this mechanism of hiring by a recruiter can be done uh, in an auto-scheduler mechanism uh, and which is all, you know, AI-proctored when it comes to assessment, when it comes to in, in JDs. And then a lot of repository skill repository material are available, which can really help the student to upgrade themselves. Now, this is the end-to-end -end recruitment workflow, what an institute will uh, really uh, uh, get when they use our platform, which is MUNI Siegel. So we start from campus data management. You know, that's the first process where you connect with the recruiters, at, at, a, at a single click, you can just announce that the campus is open and you can reach out to 100 of recruiters at one go. Once you have reached out to them, then the actual, uh, you know, upon the acceptance of your uh, invitation, then the actual shortlisting starts how many students are participating for what kind of uh, job, what kind of JDs, the shortlisting can happen, the complete life cycle you can manage through this pla platform. And then the campus recruitment and the assessment process. So you can conduct, I mean, the recruiter can conduct n number of uh, assessment through the platform, right from uh, technical tests, sport based tests, whatever they can manage through a platform. And as an institute, as a an, uh, university, you can have a track that what's happening, what is the progress of each student. Then the skill, uh, skill and campus preparation for each student so that they are ready to face the interviews. So all this is an end-to-end -end workflow mechanism for uh, the institute. Similarly, the process is common for the recruiter. So for recruiters also, we have the same thing, campus outreach and uh, the data management where they can reach out to the campuses and accept the invitation, uh, which is... Uh, coming to them or they can reach out to the uh, institute and share their JDs or their requirements so that they can get best sort of candidate who are the right fit according to their requirement. Post that once they receive the uh, uh, profiles of the candidate, once the institute accept their invitation, they can start with the shortlisting process. They can communicate at a single go, schedule the JDs, uh, schedule the interviews and plan the entire activity of assessment and selection. They will also get a KPI dashboard, which will help them to really have all the reports uh, at a single uh, view.
to understand the progress of the entire campus uh, uh, placement activity and then onboarding and upskilling so the platform also helps you to really uh, you know on uh, even conduct the onboarding process of a candidate so once a candidate has been hired by you so entire onboarding process from him to be your employee the entire activity can be done through a platform then the campus ATS for end to end uh, for end to end visibility. That's what it, it gives you a complete visibility of the entire process. <clears throat> so at the end, it leads to improving the efficiency and effectiveness by using our platform digitization and automation. Uh, it helps you to enhance the experience. You know, it also helps you to really uh, reduce the workload by 70%. It re helps you to reduce the cost up to by 50%. And also you improve your outreach. So a couple of uh, institutes with, with whom we are associated, they're working with us. There are lots of many, but I could really name a few here. So as I said, we are India's largest campus recruitment platform and we can associate together for campus hiring from hundreds of institute. Apart from MUNI Siegel, these are a couple of other solutions what we really provide, uh, what MUNI campus has, that is MUNI virtual class for online lecture delivery. Then we have MUNI Pariksha for conduction of online examination. MUNI Ignite, which is an LMS, so learning management system. MUNI Siegel, we already spoke about for campus and placement management. MUNI Admit, one of the solutions that helps you to manage the entire admit, admission process of any institute. MUNI Admin Suit, this is for the for managing the MUNI, uh, for managing the admin activity of any institute. So uh, this is all from my side. Uh, these are my and my colleague uh, Catherine's uh, credentials. You can connect with us for any of the uh, requirement. So uh, this is all from my side. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Hi, Anita. This is Jennifer. I'm the GPO. Uh, I'm having a couple of questions regarding your services. So mm -hmm. your services are of free of cost. Are there any charges for the institute or for the students? So thanks, Jennifer, for your question. So uh, as I said, there are a lot of uh, you know services and solutions what we have, what we provide. You must have seen that in the earlier presentation by Mr. Dairy also that lots of tools what our platform provides. You know, so uh, we provide us services into two different model so a couple of services are in a mode of freemium where we don't charge you anything and a couple of services are yes premium services where we definitely uh, charge so i would request you to connect with us where we can really give you the list of the services and we can discuss about the price yes that's great thank you yeah thank you so do we have any more questions yeah, this is Pankaj uh, from the IM Bodh Gaya. Yes, Mr. Pankaj. So, is there any customization also the MUNI you know, the provide to this like uh, institutes or what? If in case uh, any sorry, colleges want. Uh, uh, can you please repeat your question? I'm sorry, I could not really. Customized service right. for the college. I'm asking customized service for the college. Yes, sure, we can do that. Whatever is your requirement, you can please let uh, let us know, and we can definitely customize the service for you. Okay, thank you. So, can I know? No, I just wanted to understand that what area you look after, Mr. Pankaj, at I am both there. So, I'm a corporate relation manager over here as well as the placement okay. officer. Okay, okay. So, so if you want to elaborate all. on what is your requirement, you can really let us know now also, or we can even discuss it a little later. No, okay, no problem. We can discuss later on it, but sure. Okay. Mr. Pankaj, uh, typically yeah. this platform is built on the crowdsource intelligence, right? Okay, okay. God has not given us so intelligent that we can build this intelligent platform. So this is okay. built by so the consultation with various institutions, right? So sure. we took sure. input from various IIMs, NITs, engineering colleges, management colleges, so best practices over these, right? So this platform we have built, which works for the Western market as well as for the Indian market. Sure, so sure, both, sure, sure. Uh, the current uh, platform has 90%, 95% will suit to any of the institution's need, right? Minor modifications, other stuff are most welcome because uh, that 
actually evolves our type bomb. Uh, uh, adding to what Jennifer's question was, Anita. So Jennifer, this base platform, which is a premium platform, that platform is good enough for you to actually run majority of the requirements. Okay, that's right? it. Okay. So for uh, universities, we are not trying to really burden you with additional financial crunches. But of course, you want a pizza, definitely you have to pay. <laughs> Dal roti is, is absolutely free of cost. So don't worry on that one. Yes. <laughs> and we recently rolled another uh, tool, which is uh, corporate outreach and campus outreach. And mm -hmm. um, this normally is offering worldwide. And that is like a powerhouse that will really add wings to um, your initiatives. Right? So you can really reach to hundreds of recruiters without managing your data, without tackling, right? Uh, ready templates are there, so even you don't have to write the email. Uh, you have to just simply connect, they will fill up the form at all if they're interested, and bingo, here you go. And rest of everything our platform takes care of. So this is a one class experience. I know, like, so there was a, another question by uh, some gentleman, Sarat. Sarat says that we have our own ERP. Do we really need to get it done from outside? So congratulations, Sarkat, that you have already built the ERP. But my experience of the last 20, 25 years I have seen, ERP is one of the most abused words, just like a data iteration. So um, first, congratulations that you have built your own ERP. But you need to really see what this ERP does, whether it is on the campus recruitment or whether it is for managing your payroll, other stuff. Uh, but even presuming campus recruitment, in many ERP. So I would recommend that you actually check your ERP again this um, digital maturity framework and you'll realize where your ERP stands. Because within ERP there are a lot of silo stuff and ERP it's not only replicating your manual process into the digital world, right? Uh, which does not significantly reduce your manual work. The, the manual work reduces when you are able to infuse certain level of human intelligence into your system, right? And this uh, intelligence of the human mind, when it combines with this system, which becomes artificial intelligence. So most of the traditional legacy ERP are the rule-based ERP. They are dumb system. They do not automate, they do not take intelligence at their own. Uh, right, so uh, I think you need to really go deeper um, into that, and, and we can really connect this line and we can leave it. So I believe there are. Okay, so uh, I hope if anybody has any more questions. Arun has a question. We are already managing well with Google Sheet and Excel. Why we should take extra Excel and extra training for data is also. Okay, so uh, Mr. Arun, uh, to answer your question, uh, Okay, I mean, you're very comfortable using Google Sheets because it has, it involves lots of practice for so many years. Uh, just let me give you an example of, you know, uh, it's, it's similar to you using a Maruti 800 car and we are offering you with uh, a BMW. So you need to really understand the difference between both. Uh, I would suggest you to experience our platform. Of course, uh, it will help you to reduce a lot of manual work even uh, you know you will get reports which are a lot of uh, with lot of accuracy it will help you to filter and shortlist the right kind of uh, candidate based on the requirement uh, what what comes from uh, recruiters to you with the level of accuracy and the you know minutest uh, filter as per the requirement and uh, also it will save a lot of your time so this is what i will suggest in your case and 